What's up Aries, it's me, the Sunlight Oracle, and I have your readings for the dates of September 16th through the 30th, 2021. Of all the Aries videos you could watch, you selected this one. Trust that you did it for a reason, my friends. Thank you. What we have coming out already is the King of Cups, and I'm not sure if that's you. Let's see. While you're here, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Cross, but that's you. The King of Rods and the King of Cups. I already feel like we're talking about a relationship here, my friends. It could be, it feels like a relationship with um, someone who would be considered a, a superior. Now that could be anyone in a romantic relationship, certainly like a work relationship, like a boss. Um, but the point is that I have two strong personalities here who have very different ways of approaching problems, okay? I have one that I feel like is older and one that I feel like is younger, at least in spirit. You would be the King of Rods, Aries, in the sense that it's a very fiery card, a very charged forth card. I feel like the person that is in question here is very much a person who is calculated, right? They're not impulsive. They aren't really driven so much by their passions. They aren't really dragged by their passions, to be honest. There's a seniority to them. There's a maturity and a wisdom to them. That also, I feel like, is frustrating to you because of your new, fresh, kind of childlike approach to things. This this way, the way that this person um, approaches certain problems, you're like, I would do it so differently. <laughs> And uh, let's see, I mean, you know, there's a time to really employ that and there's a time to um, take a seat, but let's see where, where you are. Let's look at the past. We have strength, cool. And we're gonna look at the future as well. We have the King of Pentacles, but it's reversed. Okay, my friends, here's the thing. Aries, you've definitely been through it, right? We get strength in the past, which in this deck especially indicates to me that you have gone through ups and downs in life that have really fortified sort of your strengths and weaknesses. You've been through hell, okay? And through that experience, you have learned so much about what you have to offer and what you have to bring to the table, okay? Sometimes we arrive at the wrong table. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing, is you're not wrong for being the king of rods. You'll never be wrong for being the king of rods, really. Um, and the King of Cups, I mean, he, she, they, they're also not wrong, you know, but I feel already like the situation that you're applying your fire to, that you're applying your story to, that you're applying your energy to, it just might be sort of a losing battle, to be honest with you, because what we get here in the future is the King of Pentacles, but he's reversed. So how I feel about that is that you, if you, I feel like you might be sticking around this with this person, whoever they are, for the material and financial gain that this person could directly or indirectly provide for you. And what I get in the future is that you could have that. I mean, you can have anything you want. If you want financial abundance, that can, that can definitely be in your life. But it seems that because it's reversed, it feels like it's a little bit at odds with you. That money, that stuff, the material stuff, that's gonna take a while to show up. And I feel like that's already at odds with sort of the impulsivity and the rashness of your energy here as the King of Rods. The King of Pentacles, the King of Cups, the King of Rods. We've got a lot of kings here. We've got a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of figures here who um, crave power and control and mastery. And you are one of them. I'm just wondering like why you are so incessant on wanting to hook up with them in this way instead of maybe potentially going your own way, maybe potentially creating your own table and inviting people to it to join you instead of going to other tables and crashing them and trying to kind of frankly impose your power, your energy, etc., unto them. Have you considered maybe departing and doing your own thing, being your own king? Okay, consciously we get the hermit and subconsciously we get the three of cups. Those two are quite at odds, to be honest. I feel like uh, if we can switch gears here a little bit, Aries, that a lot of you are seeking your people. You're seeking to group up. You're seeking, um, again, a community of like-minded people. And if you're experiencing some kind of spiritual awakening as so many people who come to this channel are, then you're probably just looking to feel validated in your desires, in your expressions, in your perceptions of the world. Very normal. What we get consciously here 
is the hermit reversed. So you're at odds here because you want community but you also are kind of um, insistent on being alone. Now that is something that I, I often really promote on this channel. I believe being alone can be such a great tool to getting to know yourself, get to know what you want, get to know where you feel comfortable in the world. However, I do see like a desire, like a more, in, a more pressing desire to group up. So Aries, the question here becomes like, you don't have to dampen your fire, but how can you redirect it in the direction where it's going to be respected, where it's going to be um, accepted and really like perceived with joy instead of like something that you feel like you have to kind of breathe fire on everyone. Okay. There are people, there are friends, there are loads of people who think like you want to be around you and want to hear you express your ideas. Your focus now should be on kind of refining those ideas so that you can naturally start to attract said people, right? Because I feel like a lot of you do feel lonely in this moment, you feel misunderstood, also very normal during a spiritual awakening. But there has to be a little more action on your part of, of knowing who you are, accepting and respecting who other people are, and then building what you came here to build. Um, not in spite of these people, but like alongside them, you know, separately. You are represented as judgment. There's a lot of pressure you're putting on yourself right now, Aries. I feel like um, there's a little bit of perspective that can be shifted here from like just the urgency and the importance and the, the like, I just hear urgency, um, fire. Uh, the, I also feel like the chariot energy kind of here. Like you're pushing forward so hard because you think like it's do or die time. Like this is it. Like maybe you have an idea or, or um, a project that you think like this is divine timing and I really need to get it out now. And what I want to say is that with the rest of this spread, you have time. You have lots of time. And I do feel like you have lots of work to do in locating yourself, in locating your own desires, and locating your own vision. You you want to have a vision, which is great, but I'm encouraging you to spend more time actually learning what the vision is instead of just like the concept of a vision. Do you know what I mean? Get specific, write it down, T write down dates, numbers, <laughs> uh, be as specific as possible. And I think when you start doing that, when you start really putting your finger on it, a lot of this pressure that I feel here with the judgment card, um, is really, it's going to alleviate. And that might be scary because you like the fire, but the fire I'm telling you from this spread looks like it's kind of isolating you from other people, not in the way again, that you need to dampen your fire, but that it sh could be more specific. It could be communicated with greater ease and understood by more people, you know? Okay. In your environment, we get the sun, which tells me that you actually are surrounded by a lot of people who would be re receptive to what you have to say, what your vision is, etc. Again, if you can learn how to articulate it authentically and concisely without really stepping on the toes, toes of others. I see there are a lot of receptive people. There are a lot of people who would want to work with you, work for you, work alongside you. That's, that's all here. It just comes back to you. Um, learning like where to kind of release the, the pressure within yourself. Where's the pressure valve? Okay. In your hopes and fears, we get the fool. Okay, I feel like this is like a vulnerable part of the reading. It, this has been kind of hard, honestly, to penetrate your energy right now, uh, Aries, because I do feel like it's so fiery, <laughs> but, um, you know, hot to the touch. But what I see here is some vulnerability in the hopes and fears, which is there is part of you that is open to experimenting. There is a part of you that's like actually okay with like doing something else, going on a different route like maybe starting again is what I'm hearing. There is part of you, but that's also scary because that requires vulnerability. Something about this like laser focus of the King of Rods, of the Judgment card, of these two cards together, it's telling me that part of you is part of your fire right now is actually um, a form of defense more than invitation. You might think it's invitation, but it very much is perceived as defense. That's also part of learning how to appeal to all the people who would be sucked into the invitation instead of the defense. So how can you sort of change, 
not only you don't have to change how you're expressing yourself because I feel you're expressing yourself authentically, but how can you reframe um, the language you use when you're expressing yourself, right? I feel like there's just some, there's a major truth here that's being overlooked by you. And as a result, the, the truth that you share is not received wholly by others because you're missing something. You're missing something. Anyway, back to the hopes and fears with the fool. Um, I also feel that part of you are actually kind of excited by the prospect of experimenting, of starting over, of getting another chance, of reverting and kind of reverting to like your childlike ways, you know? So hold space for that. Hold space for your own vulnerability. Don't take yourself so seriously. Again, you might be scaring off more people than you're inviting. Okay. All right. <laughs> of course, Aries, your card here, the emperor. I do feel that the resolution or the solution here is a big call to really, I've already talked about this, but like really um, hunker down and focus on what it is that you want. There is some convenient overlooking here that you're doing because maybe it's hard to look at what you want. Maybe it's painful to look at what you want. Maybe that means that you have to cut out other people or other things or compromise other activities and time. But here with the emperor, that is undoubtedly you. And the emperor is sort of, you know, learning how to master responsibility. And for you, it's like, I, I do feel there's a call for your own responsibility, learning how to balance the desire for fire, power, moving forward, getting what you want, desire, etc., with responsibility, responsibility to yourself and responsibility, frankly, to others so that you don't harm yourself or others. Okay. So there is a big call to, again, um, uh, what is that? Hone in on your focus. Also be more vulnerable and also be aware of when you think you're being inviting, but you're actually being defensive and pushing people away. Okay. Aries, this was intense. Um, as all the readings really have been lately. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the reading by using the sunlight Oracle deck. Ooh, this is a deck I designed. In 75 cards. I designed it when I got sober and it has little pieces of wisdom that I like to close out the readings with. So Aries, for you we get Will. Okay. I feel like Will in this case and, and as it relates to this reading very much <laughs> has to do with like you don't have a um, issue here with the will to create, the will to um, have a vision to, to execute the vision. That's not the problem. The will you have it all day. The will that I think could be brought into question here is again, the willingness to consider that your vision, your means of um, problem solving are not actually for everyone and not actually for the collective. Okay. So your willingness is not, it's, you're, you do not struggle with will. Again, I think it's just a matter of learning how to direct that will into a focus instead of kind of unleashing it on everyone and everything. I just feel like you're just mowing this all over um, without really looking within and really getting in touch with the vulnerability. Um, the vulnerability is key here, my friends. Okay, this reading was complex. I. I hope it resonates with some of you. Please let me know. And um, until next week, have a great day.